I'm Jani Sharali and we are going to learn a very interesting topic in Android development. Android OS provide some classes which is basis on which Android framework is built on and we will be exploring these topics of looper and handler in this tutorial. So in order to define what we are going to learn here are the things. We will learn what are loopers, handlers and handler thread. Then we will explore why do we need these classes. We will learn to build our own alternative solution for understanding the mechanism on which these classes work. We will examine the class design of these constructs. We will learn to use them in our Android development. So let's explore what is looper, handler and handler thread. These are the classes provided by the Android OS for managing a thread and the task through which we run on that thread. So the question is why do we need these high level abstractions? Java provide us with thread and various concurrent util classes. So Android OS has provided us with these classes. If we explore Java thread, it is one time use only and terminates after its run method is executed and creating separate threads for performing multiple tasks will result in the creation of large number of threads. If we have large number of threads, the memory allocation will be larger and there will be more overhead in switching the thread execution from one thread to another thread. Cross thread communication that is we want to send some task from one thread to another thread or some data from one thread to another thread. It is very difficult to do with plain Java classes. So these classes help to solve these problems. So looper and handler provide a solution to these problems. Before we go through these classes, I want to bring forward a simple solution that we can devise in order to solve these problems. This will help us understand the basic principles on which the looper and handler works. So the simple solution I propose will be something like this. We will keep a thread running by putting an infinite loop in its run method. We will maintain a queue in which we will add the tasks. Tasks will be runnable that will be processed by the thread. We will use a loop to dequeue the task and then execute the runnable which we have added in the queue. And after we are done with the processing, we will terminate and stop the thread by calling its quit method. This is the solution that we are going to develop and this will help us understand how in the background looper and handler works. So now we will see an example where we will implement this solution and understand it better. For this tutorial, I have created a very simple Android project which brings main activity and a layout called activity main. These are auto generated by the Android studios. So this activity XML file has a text view. I'll provide it an ID, call it text view message. This will be used to print any message that we supply to the activity. Now we will create a class, call it simple worker. This will extend a thread, will provide a constructor to it. Okay, and we will supply a name so that we can know which thread it is. First, I'll generate a tag and provide a name to it. Okay, when simple worker will be instantiated, it will start itself calling the start method of this thread. Now, when the start method is called, it executes the run method which is defined by this thread. So we'll override that. 
okay we don't need to call super here so when the thread starts to run we will keep it running in a loop for that I need a flag so what I will do I'll create an atomic boolean and call it alive and provide default value as true now while it is alive will keep it running we will be posting task as runnables to this worker and running it while it is in the loop so we need to create a queue on which we will put our tasks I'll create a concurrent linked queue okay it will store runnables call it task queue new concurrent linked queue okay I'm using concurrent linked queue because multiple threads can try to add task into this queue so now while it's alive what I will do I'll take this runnable task which is in the queue I'll call dot poll and if task is not null that is in there is some task in the queue I'll run this task and finally when it comes out of the while loop I will just print out that program has terminated for the simple worker as an interface for the outer world to interact with simple worker I'll provide a method call it execute and I will be returning the instance of this class only so that we can use a builder like thing to add more tasks to it call it execute okay we'll pass in a runnable task and we'll just add the task into the queue and then return this and we will also expose a method call it quit what it will do is it will set the value of alive to false when we set alive to false this while loop will break and then thread will will execute the last line and will terminate after that we will test this class in our main activity what I will do I'll create a simple worker call it worker I'll run when on create is called and also I'll create a text view instance call it text view message now I'll instantiate the worker when on create is called new simple worker when this worker is created thread will start running now we will enqueue the task for this worker to perform I'm using lambda enabled Android studio project so I can use this lambda I'm adding three task runnables to the worker now when execute is called that worker thread will execute the code inside this runnable so when it is called I will make the thread to sleep let's say for one second okay I'll have to catch the exception here and finally 
I want to set a message in the text view that processing has been done. So what I will have to do is I have to supply the message from my worker thread to the main thread and main thread will then update the text message. So for communicating with the main thread, I will be needing a handler to the main thread. We will understand how this works in the later part of this tutorial. So for now, let's create a handler and instantiate it. Okay. When I create a handler, I will supply the looper of the main thread. And here I will handle a message which is sent to this handler. Now I will use this handler to send a message to the main thread. First I will create a message by using the static method obtain and in the message I'll put a string I'll called task one completed and then send this message. Similarly, I'll do it for the other task, task two completed and task three completed. Task two will run for 500 milliseconds and task 3 for 1 second. Now here we can see that we have a worker we are running these tasks in the background thread of the worker and after the execution is complete we are sending a message to the main thread using the handler and when handle message is called it will set the text view message dot set text as a message object we'll have to cast it into the type of object now we will provide the instance of text view from the layout call find view by id r dot id dot text view message so now let's run our program and see what's the output Now we can see that we are getting the printing of our task. So let's now understand what we have built. So we have a simple worker which extends a thread. There is a flag which keeps the thread running in a while loop. We have a task queue. Whenever a task is enqueued, we add it into the queue. Whenever a task is there in the queue the thread after finishing the previous task will dequeue this queue and then run the runnable which is supplied into the task queue and we need to also call the quit method we will put it in the on destroy of the activity so this is our implementation and now we will see how handler and looper helps to achieve the same solution. Welcome to the part 2 of this tutorial. In the earlier part we developed our own solution for the problem. We developed a system where we used a single thread to process multiple tasks. Now we will see how looper and handler helps to achieve this solution. So there are three parts of the solution. First is message queue. So it is the same queue that we developed in our solution. Here it stores messages. Messages contains payloads as well as runnables. So we can pass on messages 
to the message queue and in order to do that we have to use handlers handlers put the messages into the message queue via the looper looper keeps the thread alive by putting it in the infinite loop we in our solution used while loop to keep the thread alive so looper perform the same operation it keeps the thread alive by putting it in an infinite loop it dequeues the messages and then send those messages to the corresponding handlers or execute the runnables if it is enqueued into our message queue it uses the same thread in which it is looping to execute the codes once it is delivered to the handlers finally we need to terminate the thread by calling looper's quit method so these principles work in the same fashion that we developed in our solution now let's understand how this whole system works so there is a message queue this message queue belongs to a thread so this thread can be any thread here we are discussing about the main thread so main thread has a message queue the looper is associated with the main thread it keeps the main thread alive there are various handlers which are associated with this looper handlers put the messages in the queue so any other thread can use the handler which is associated with the main thread to enqueue the messages into the message queue when the looper dequeues one of the messages it delivers the messages to the corresponding enqueuing handler the handler executes that message using the thread on which it is associated so this is how handler works and our solution that we developed works in the same fashion so now let's see how to use looper and handler with a thread in an actual code so first we need to create a looper and the message queue for a thread and it can only be created after the thread is running so there are three static methods in the looper first is looper dot prepare this method uniquely identifies the thread and then creates a looper and a message queue for that thread when a looper has been associated with the thread we need to start the infinite loop that is we need to start looping through that thread so looper dot loop it starts the loop which is associated with the thread and keep it in the infinitely running state then finally we have looper dot quit method it terminates the looper and put the thread out of the infinite loop as an example let's see uh, how we can use this to construct our own looper and handler so in this example we have a class looper thread we are extending the normal java thread there is an handler defined in the thread and when the thread is started the run method will be called so first line prepares a looper creates the message queue and the looper for this thread and associate it to the given thread now after the looper has been prepared we instantiate a handler so the thread which instantiates a handler gets the looper of that thread so we have a new handler so we are overriding the method handle message so whenever the message comes out of the message queue it will be delivered to this handler back and this code will be executed by this thread finally we are calling looper dot loop so this method will start looping through this thread and this thread will keep on enqueuing and dequeuing the message queue and finally executing after it comes out of the message queue now how to use looper and handler with a thread we have created looper we have created handler and we have created a thread which gets its looper and we attach a handler to the looper 
now second thing is we need to create the handler we just saw in the previous example that we instantiate a new handler and override the handle message so handler get implicitly attached to the looper of the thread that instantiate it or there is another way to attach a handler to a looper we can explicitly attach a handler to a threads looper we have to pass the looper in the constructor of the handler in this example we can see that we can create a new handler and provide the looper of some thread so this handler will get associated with the looper of that thread now in the next part we will see how we can improve upon the solution that we developed where we created a thread and attached the looper and handler to it welcome to the part 3 of this tutorial in the last part we saw looper and handler and how looper and handler can be associated with a thread there we saw message queue so let's understand how message queue operates message queue can receive two types of tasks first is message and another is runnable message is a class that defines various methods that help to supply the payload for the task it is passed back to the enqueuing handler when the thread is free to process the message so message queue stores the messages which can contain certain information about itself and when it is dequeued it is passed back to the handler which enqueued it so that the thread can process the message through the handler runnable is also stored in one form of messages and runnable is executed in the similar fashion as message is handled through the handler now let's see how we can put messages into the message queue so first we need to create a message object so there is a static method in message class called obtain this provide a message instance from the pool of the messages that os maintains so this is for increasing the efficiency of message creation so we create a message and then we can supply a payload with the message so there is a variable object in the message we can supply our own object here i have supplied string any type of object can be supplied to the message then through the handler we have to send the message so we have to call it send message and when we call it send message it is enqueued in the message queue now suppose we want to use runnable as a message so first we need to create a handler and then we can simply post the runnable to the message queue via the handler there is one configuration which is very efficient in some cases that we can post the task at some specified amount of time that is we want that message should be processed after let's say one second so we can use post delete method where we can supply our runnable and then we can supply the time after which it should be put into the message queue so all these construct are very effective in order to interact with the main thread so when an android application starts there is a thread which starts executing we call that thread as main thread this thread is also called as the ui thread because it is responsible for drawing the views in our android app in order to run any task through the main thread we must send the message to the main thread via the looper which is associated with the main thread so one way is that we create a handler and associate that handler to the looper of the main thread so there is a method in the looper class called get main looper so this provides the looper of the main thread so this handler get associated with the looper of the main thread and now when we post any message 
or runnable through this handler it is enqueued in the message queue which is maintained by the main thread and when that message is dequeued the main thread executes them by providing it back to the handler that is the main thread will execute this run method after some time when the message is dequeued now in the next part we will explore handler thread and understand its use cases welcome to the part 4 of the tutorial in the last part we saw about message queue and how to communicate with the main thread of the android in this example we will see handler thread there are two ways to use handler thread first is by subclassing the handler thread another is to instantiate handler thread and associate a handler to the thread slooper now let's see how to use handler thread in the code example so we have a thread which extends the handler thread so everything is encapsulated in the handler thread class so we don't need to prepare a looper and call the loopers.loop method it, this all will be taken care by this handler thread another way to use the handler thread is to instantiate it directly provide the name for the handler thread then we have to call the start of the handler thread this is start will start the thread which is encapsulated in the handler thread as well as it will prepare the looper and start the looper by calling it loop method then in order to talk to the thread which is encapsulated in the handler thread we will have to create a handler and supply the looper which is attached with the handler thread note here that uh, get looper method is blocking that is the thread when calls get looper it is blocked till the looper is prepared and associated with the handler thread so let's see some explanation about handler thread the looper is prepared after handler thread start is called that is when the thread is running then the looper is prepared a handler can be associated with the handler thread only after the looper is prepared so get looper is blocking the thread which calls get looper is blocked and when finally the looper is prepared for the thread the handler get instantiated and looper is supplied to the handler thread we also need to call quit so that we can free the resources and also stop the execution of the thread now in the next part we will take up an example where we will use this handler and looper to build the same system that we built earlier as a simple solution to this problem welcome to the part 5 of this tutorial in the last part we saw about looper handler and message queue and we understood the theoretical construction of the looper and handler and how to use them in our code now in this example we will create a worker thread we will post runnable a task will execute the task serially and then process the result on the main thread so this is what we want to achieve the same thing we did with our simple worker example now we will use looper and handler to reach a solution for that in the earlier example we created our simple worker to achieve what we mentioned in our problem statement now we will see how to use handler thread to achieve the same result first we need to create a class we will call it worker this class will extend the handler thread we need to supply a constructor now let's create a tag this and this name we will define our own okay so when this worker is constructed we will start the thread now we will define our execute method similar to what we did for our simple worker 
will return the worker and call it execute and we will supply the runnable and call this as task now we need a handler so that we can put this runnable into the message queue which is supplied to this handler thread so we will create our handler now we need to instantiate this handler and then we need to supply the looper of this so what we will do is we will supply our handler after running the thread we can instantiate the handler and call get looper get looper will prepare the looper and then supply it to the handler so the thread which calls instantiates the worker will get blocked till the looper is prepared for this thread now we can call handler dot post or task and then we will return this now in our main activity we will just replace simple worker with our new worker now let's run and see if it works you now see the program works in the same way our simpler worker did we can see that with fewer lines of code we could achieve the same result as we were able to achieve with the simple worker one thing is very interesting here that when i call worker.execute it run this task in the worker thread and now this worker thread needs to send the message to the other thread that is the main thread so this handler helps in communicating one thread to the other thread this handler is attached to the main thread and the other thread can use the handler which is attached to the other thread to send the message to that thread and this code will be executed by the main thread once the handler get the message back from the message queue so we just learned about creating a thread and supplying it a looper and handler and we also saw how we can communicate between two threads and we also learned how to run tasks on the main thread this ends this tutorial series i hope you must have learned something i'll see you next time do remember to subscribe to this channel we will be bringing out good tutorial series on various other topics as well so i'll see you next time